Good evening. How was your day? Wow. Mine was great. I thank God. Um, I wanted to begin by making an announcement. Friday next week, next week, a time like this, we are going to have a, another man of God who is going to speak to us. He is going to fly in the same day on Friday. He will be with us on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then he is leaving on Tuesday with the same flight. He's a man of God that God spoke to him when he was talking, looking around this side of Mars a bit. And he said, God asked me to go. He spoke to me when he was in Nairobi, when I was in Nairobi. Uh, so he's coming in. We thank God for him. Praise the Lord. We met one time after I finished class here on Monday. He took us to Garden Inn. Garden Inn, we ate samaki there after he finished the class. We did some holy communion in that place. It was a Muslim hotel. But God sent him to do something. So we did the holy communion. He, he began testifying to so many. He's a good evangelizer. At the time I was telling him, you need to come and teach us about evangelism. If he stands with you like this for five minutes, he will lead you to Jesus and he leaves. And he goes to another one. I think he will come and share with us some of those things. So let's pray for him. I know God has put something special on his heart. Now, then this, this also the first week of uh, of October, from that one, we're going to have Ben Isaac here. Ben Isaac is from Kampala. Some of you have his books. You've seen. He'll also be with us here for seven days. You told me now, seven days. What will happen to the devil? <laughs> He told me then that <laughs> that land will be shocked. Amen. Uh, we are going to do some posters on that, and then we uh, we 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 make a difference. At least let's let somebody come here and share with us something new. November also we might have Apostle Dambi from Ethiopia to speak to us. The first week, kwa style. We want to get into the style. Mbaka January. Amen. Men of God are rare in our time. And if God, you know, there are so many people who are called pastors and preachers. But there are very few men of God. Very few men of God. All person who is pastor or preacher is not a man of God. Them that are men of God, you know. There's something unique about them. Something unique. There's strange grace upon their life. That even when they speak to you just for just some 20-30 minutes, you feel like something is happening to you. Praise the Lord. Yes, so we thank God for, uh, it's called Malcolm David. I think on, on Facebook you can get that guy who is coming next week. Uh, so continue praying for him also, even as he comes over. Amen. Today I want to continue in the teaching that we are moving on with, the word of God. And today I want to define in the word of God. What is the definition of God's word? That's the big question. Is everything that is in the Bible the word of God? Is everything that being preached on the pulpit the word of God? Because somebody opened the Bible and he began speaking. Does it mean that what he is saying is truly the word of God? Now, uh, we will look at that. We will look at that. Uh, having a church, a structure like this put, and people coming and sitting, does it simply mean that that is really the church of God, or the speaking the word of God? Uh, I will share with us something unique today, and I believe that the Lord will give you much understanding on this, in Jesus' precious name. Do we need this light? Maybe if it can make a difference, we might have it, if this light can make a difference on this light. So, so let's, let's move on. We were looking at John chapter number 1 verse, from verse 1 to 3. The gospel of John chapter number 1 from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, um, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, 
and the word is God. Verse 2 it says, he was in the beginning with God. He, the same was in the beginning with God. And then verse 3 says, all things were made by him. And uh, uh, Kevin, do not forget to record. Eh? The, uh, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Hmm? All things. We talked a lot about this last time on Monday. If all things were made by God, even the very human beings who want to believe that uh, there is no God, even them they were created by God himself. So if he's the, if he's, he's the beginning of every beginning, if he's the one who has begun everything, I mean everything, everything, I mean everything, if you want to know anything, to understand the beginning of anything, then God has to be the source of your information. That's what we said. Any other information that is outside God is not truth. It is not. Uh, you might have been spoken to by teachers around. Scientists have done so many things. Uh, you might have got information from so many different areas, different persons, uh, different traditions. Now, as long as what they are telling you is not from God, that is not true. Jesus, when he came on earth, it's surprising to hear that uh, he says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Now, in the Old Testament, we have never heard of anybody speak that kind of language. In the Old Testament. I am the truth. Meaning there's high possibility, much of the things that the prophets knew, it might not be full truth, even as they are speaking sometimes. So if you want to understand God, we look at Jesus and everything that he does. If you want to know the will of God, if you want to know the will of God, Jesus is the will of God manifested. Uh, the best way to know the truth about everything is by listening to Jesus Christ. Is by listening to Jesus? Jesus Christ. Just look at how he lived. Look at what he said. Look at The more you look at Jesus The more you know much of the truth The Bible says All things were made by him And without him nothing was made that was ever Made Jesus is the word of God made flesh As we read also in verse 14 The Bible says And the word put on flesh And dwelt among us And we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of truth, or full of grace and truth. Hmm? The word was put in the human flesh. And John says, we behold his glory. There's something about the word of God. Praise the Lord. That's why everything is, that his people speak is not about God. It's not about the word of God. He says, this word... This Jesus that we saw with our physical eyes as he was walking in human flesh. He says, we saw glory. Amen. What is, what is glory? <laughs> There's something so unique about Jesus. There's something so unique about his words. I'm talking about the person of the word of God. Hmm? There's something about the word. If, you, if the word lands on you, you cannot remain the same. I mean, you cannot. You cannot. I mean, if the word lands on you, eh? pop! In a <laughs> Look at what happened to Paul. On the road to Damascus. The Bible says, this light hit him. And what happened to him? He lost his sight. 
And his direction in life changed from that moment. His direction in life changed from that moment. In fact, he picked the purpose of his life on that day. Meaning, as long as you have never met the word of God. Now, there are so many people who are living, even believers, even preachers, who are even preaching and believers who are living, who do not understand why exactly they, they exist. When the word lands on you, you will get the right direction. In fact, you realize that you are on the wrong path. You realize that something has to turn around. Hmm? Some of us, that's what happened to us. When this thing landed on us, we put aside whatever we were doing before <laughs> and we came here. I was talking with Bernard ben Isaac when I was in Nairobi. You, you know, he's, he did, he's, he's an English teacher. If you begin talking, even when you read his book, you'll see that he knows English. I mean, he knows English. Um, somebody help him to get the camera from here and the charger, the other camera. Um, so what I'm saying is uh, he said that the day that Robert Kayanja hit him what happened was his life turned around I mean his life turned around I'm saying when the word lands on you you cannot remain the same in a church where the word of God is being preached there will be natural transformation of human life without struggling. Huh? You cannot remain the same. One of the things about the word of God is this. The way God thinks and the way a human thinks is different. Do we know that? If it really is the word of God that has come to you, it will challenge the way you think. And it will displace your reasoning. You see, he is the Lord, we say that. So if the word comes, the word of God is forceful. If, if it arrives on you, it has to displace the ideas that is not of God that is already in you. And as long as those ideas are being displaced from within you, your transformation is natural. You don't struggle to change. You don't struggle to change the bad habit that you have. You don't struggle to, you know, there are some things, sometimes I meet people who have been Christian for so many years, who have been struggling with so many problems, so many bad habits, so many. They have just to come to sit before the word of God. And their change is inevitable. Praise the Lord. So we are talking about Jesus who put on flesh. He came among and then as they look at his life, my goodness, I, I wish I had time to Jesus physical or not. I, I would, I, I'm wondering, <laughs> how will my life be? Especially if you have got his revelation, who he is. Hmm? Your life will be different. If we become preachers who do not have revelation, we put people in the same position every now and then. They will never change. Because I must change first before people change. So if I am not changing and something about the word of God, if it comes to you every day, it changes you every day. Sometimes you might not even understand that you are changing. Until you stay for two months, three months, and you wonder, are you the same? You begin realizing the way you talk is different. The way you perceive things are different. It's like, this is one of the things that the word of God does, it turns around your life. You have been facing in the wrong direction. When the word arrives, it's like you have been in a dark house. And you are not go to Kitembe Kugonga Kila Kitu. You know when you walk in a dark room, you guess <laughs> which is the path to go. <laughs> so Unatembe come a blind person. That is how people live who do not get the word of God. Amen. Hmm? When I always see people beginning, wondering, always trying to, to say, we don't know what the will of God is. The Holy Spirit help us. Did you notice some, 
there are some religious phrases we are used to making. Hmm? The Holy Spirit leads us. The truth is, <laughs> the, Spirit, the Spirit is not even where you are. You pray that this, eh? this is way even you pray for the, for the preacher. You know that they pray for the preacher. Lord, we pray for him. Let him not talk what, what is of his. Let him only speak. Help him to speak what is from you. Hey! <laughs> it's surprising. We pray that Lord Jesus, as he standard to speak, let him not talk things of his own. Let him, because they know. <laughs> and that this one will speak. <laughs> if you are, the word has transformed you, you speak the word. People will not even get, today I went to the Gadamoji. You know now, they are alert when I arrive. Hallelujah. They are alive. <laughs> alert. The, the, the teacher was also seated there. I just walked in. You just look around, you see expectant. Everybody is expecting something. The word of God. I mean the word of God. And everybody is impressed, excited to get something out of whatever is coming. They are feeling like the word of God is powerful. I'm saying the word of God is powerful. What differentiates us and other religion is the power behind the word. God says, I stand behind my word to perform it. I back up it. He was, he was telling that Jeremiah. In other words, if it is not the word of God, there is no backing of God. Hmm? Or the, or Bishop Oedipo says, if you had, if you are the one who called yourself, you'll be all the, all the bills yourself. <laughs> you, you have to work out on how to support yourself. You, are, you have to make sure it is the word of God. But how do we know the word of God? It's everybody, if a person, uh, I don't know how to put it. Let me, let, me, let me just go somewhere before I go there. In Jesus name. The Bible says, in Colossians chapter number 1 verse 15 Who is the image Of the invisible God The firstborn of Every creature The image Of the invisible God That is Jesus The firstborn Of every creature Jesus is the photo, photo Is a photograph Of the unseen God huh? Photograph You want to see God now the, the, the biggest challenge there now with many people is they could hardly understand Jesus because he was there physically. If you wanted to understand God, Jesus is the one that brought, is the one who has brought the right information about God. John says in chapter 1 verse 18, he says that he came from the bosom of the father. He says, nobody has ever seen God. But the only son came from the bosom of God. Hmm? Nobody has ever seen God. But Jesus came exactly from where Christ was. Right from there. And he's the one who calls us known. How do people talk about God is mysterious? Sometimes that thing pains me. <laughs> God is mysterious. God is that thing. Hmm? He's not mysterious. He's not. He's not. If you choose to seek him, you can find him. And you can know him. Jesus says, He who believes in me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. John chapter number 8, verse 20. In other words, he can know everything about life. There are some things we cannot explain. Sometimes we are looking at why is this thing happening? Why? Jesus says you cannot walk in darkness. You will have the light of life. In other words, every information about life, Jesus can give you. He can open your eyes to see. You cannot be sitting there and wondering what is... No, 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 no. If truly it is the word of God, your mind will be illuminated. There will be spiritual understanding. There will be revelation knowledge. All these are terms that de 
defines the word of God. Meaning the word of God cannot just be accessed casually. You cannot access the word of God casually. I mean you cannot. It takes desire to see God and to know him. Nigerians are very good at seeking God. I've never heard in Kenya people who have fasted for 90 days. Or to 40 days. And they will fast until they are almost lifeless, you know. <laughs> and they are, but they have different grace. And somebody can meet God like 86 days after he began fasting. God walked to them. Here we pray even for one hour and we think we have prayed so much. <laughs> Seeking God. You want to understand this God? Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Do you want to see God? Then look at Jesus. What a light. For by him were all things created. That are in heaven. And that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. Or dominions. Or principalities. Or powers. All things were created by him. And for him. All things we are getting back there. Now, we are, we are trying to look at this. We are asking a question. Um, is everything that is being preached the word of God? Or what is the word of God? Because somebody carries a Bible like this and he walks around. Hmm? Even them that carry big Bible like this can miss God. Not this one. With all the study guides, <laughs> with all background information, this. In whichever way you carry it, <laughs> whether you want to. <laughs> huh? And you see, there's a way you walk when you carry it like this. <laughs> Even your walk, the walking style has to be very holy. <laughs> huh? You can be reading from morning to evening. I was preaching in Kitale some years back, 2014, no, 2013. And one bishop was preached for 38 years. I only preached for 15 years. He said, you know, Baba, eh? he has preached for 38 years, so you can imagine how old he is. There's a way you talk. It's like, Mimi, I have a Biblia. I have a Biblia. I have a Biblia. The word of God. The word of God. If somebody has the word, I mean, if somebody has the word, the life of that person will change you. The words that come from that person will change you. Now, Pharisees have been looking for Messiah. They have been studying. They are the experts of the law of Moses. Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, all the seas, all, the, all these people have been looking at the scriptures. They can quote. When Herod was asking, is there a king that will be born in Bethlehem? Yes. They were giving him the exact scripture in the book of Micah. Yes. Yes, something like this will happen. The same Messiah grew up before their very eyes. He was even sitting with them in Jerusalem. Three days, the doctors of the law. Reasoning with them. The Bible says in chapter number 2 of Luke verse 44 to 47. Huh? Listening and asking questions. He was right there. They were amazed at his understanding even when he talks. But they could not understand that this is the word of God. This is the very Messiah that they were talking about. The very word of God. They preach in the synagogue. <laughs> they preach in the synagogue every Sabbath. I mean they preach. The only day Jesus came to preach 
know, they gave him the book. His preaching was totally different from theirs. Huh? His preaching. What followed the next? The first sermon he made caused him to be thrown down this cliff. <laughs> this one. Huh? How is he talking? There's a way he is that cannot be compared to any other man or any other words of men that come around. There's a way he is. John says we beheld his glory. We saw. We saw. Behold. We beheld. We tulitazama. Hmm? How Jesus was too unique to other preachers who are around there. The word. His words works miracle, signs and wonders. Today I was called by by Dennis. He wanted to go to the hospital. He's COVID-19 positive. When I arrived there, he told me. All my our teachers were kata kukuja. Principal kona gari. Mambia kuja nipeleke shule alikata. Everybody that knows that I'm COVID-19, they refused to carry me. Pastor, just seeing you, I have a hope. <laughs> and then the teacher, teachers on your konaye, wakanyambia, we took him to the hospital, we did all that. Uh, and then he told me, even the teacher was confessing, three teachers, Marsak boys, they were confessing, Pastor, come on, kuja, siju, tungekuwa haja leo. Tungekuwa haja leo. I am sitting with somebody who is COVID-19 positive. I'm, I'm, I'm riding it to the, to the hospital. The guy who is at the police asked me, Who Gopi? Who Gopi? I have the word. The word is my shield. Amen. The word of God is my shield. The word of God is my shield. COVID is a virus that came the other day. God existed before this. How can I compare COVID and God? Which is mighty. <laughs> I took him there. They worked on him, just checked his whatever is happening. Now, I went there to pray for him on Wednesday. He was finding it very hard to breathe. Today, they only well, check your oxygen. Yake. It was 99. Now, for those of you who know what that means, might be Kevin, Kevin can tell us what is that. Some of us can only give us the numbers. but uh, And then the doctor who was doing that, he says, mine is even 94. His is 99. He's even better than me. He has never struggled from when is the when we prayed for him about oxygen. His, his lungs are intact. Nothing has touched. Amen. Praise the Lord. He was telling me he want to go home. I told him, you'd be healed. Wait here. I told him, wait here, my friend. It's like, I want to be taken to the best hospital. The word of God is the best hospital. The atmosphere of the word. So even as they were checking on him before I left, I prayed for him. I saw hope in that room. There were around five, including teachers, uh, sorry, the, the, the doctors, the nurses. Amen. The word of God makes us different. I'm saying his word worked miracles. Not the kind of preaching that we have these days. Not the kind of the preaching we have these days. Which is too boring even to your ears. Forget about changing your life. I'm, I'm defining the word of God. <laughs> I'm defining the word of God. Look at what Jesus told them. In chapter number 5 of John verse 39 and 40. You study the scriptures 
because you think that in them you will find eternal life. And these very scriptures speak about me, yet you are not willing to come to me in order to have me, to have life. Hmm? I think if there are people who carry big Bibles, it should be those people. Big ones, yeah? Unamali pakueka pia ukibeba. Eh? Big Bibles. Reading every day. Teaching. But then he tells them, you are looking into scriptures. Scriptures are this thing that you hold in your hand in the name of the Bible. Scriptures are not the word. But it talks about the word. Having the Bible does not mean that you have God. Having the Bible does not mean that you know God. It doesn't mean that you know God. You can carry this everywhere. And you show that when I go to Nairobi every month, you know my Bible is right there. So I catch one to pastor. Those are scary na majeshi. <laughs> pastor. <laughs> and I think I hardly find even believers walk with me on the route, but they had I, we hardly see Bible. See to kwa Bible kwa 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 see to kwa 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 simu atu baby. What, what, what these Pharisees were doing, they have been studying the scriptures. They have heard about Jesus as Isaiah spoke, as Micah spoke, as Moses himself spoke. He says, there is a prophet that God will raise from among you. Listen to him when he comes. They know that. They have read all these things. But what they lack It's a revelation. It's not everybody who is carrying the Bible and walking around that knows God. In fact, many believers are contradicting what the scripture says. Hmm? Many. Jesus is telling them, you're looking for eternal life. You'll be reading this book. He talks about who? The eternal life you're looking for is where I have it. It's in me. And you are reading every day. My goodness. May God open our eyes. I'm saying may God open our eyes. You can be the one who has been terribly deceived and never understanding God and you're walking to church every day. You can even be a preacher. You can even be a singer. You sing so much... Eh? Until people shake every corner. From every corner of the church. You can be the best intercessor. Who is not getting result any day of his life. You can be in the church for 20, 30 years. But live without encountering Jesus. That's why it matters. Even when it comes to listening to the teaching of the word of God. Who you listen to. It matters. Not everything that everybody that is preaching that has seen God, that has encountered God, or that has light. Not everybody. I'm saying not everybody. Pharisees were preaching. The question is now, are the scriptures the word of God? Jesus says the scriptures talks about me. I am in these scriptures that you hold in your hands, but you have missed me all through your life. My goodness. So it is, that's why one of the secrets of getting to know the word of God, there must be desire to know God. There must be desire. When Jesus arrived on the face of the earth, it is not everybody who saw Jesus. Only them that passionately desired, or they had passion to know him. They desired. And their desire is expressed by how they frequently appear where Jesus is. How they wanted to hear him more and more. 
Today's believer who want to hear the Bible on preaching once on Sunday. Hiyo ni kutimiza tu sheria ya kukuja kanisani siku ya Jumapili. Hmm? Ili akiulizwa Jumatatu, uliende church? Ndiyo nilienda. Eh? <laughs> we don't come to church to impress people. We come to church to meet God. And many a times it becomes very, very, how can I put it? It is a bit unfortunate um, to listen to people who have not the word. Hmm? Somebody is asking me, Pastor, how do you preach every day from morning to even, morning, evening, morning, evening, now corner? I have the word. I have the word. I don't have scriptures only. The scriptures are just there to help me release the word. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether where I stand. Whichever congregation they gather for me, there's a time I stood before 3,500 people in Ethiopia. I just took the mic and Mama Feva is there to interpret. You know, I always speak English here. Yeah. Even there, I... I just took the mic and I began speaking. I just read two verses. And when I began speaking, everybody is standing. The what? Hmm? 3,500 people. That was in 2017. When I just read the scriptures, you know, I'm not differentiating between the scriptures and the word, yeah? The scriptures talks about Jesus. But meeting Jesus is work. Getting Jesus is work. Look at all influential men and men and women of God on the face of the earth. They have enough time to seek God. Hmm? We are told Pastor Lai, before he stands before congregation, he speaks for, he prays for two hours. He goes in there. When he comes out of that place, you know what surprises me is even when we go for when we go for word explosion, his members want to hear him more than the preachers who are coming from outside. What does that speak to us? Revival nana na ubiri, bishop. Ah, tunakuja. Kisikia mtu mungine tuangalia kwa YouTube. He has the word. When he stands. You must hear something. You see, if God is here, and the way God comes to us, the way God comes here, is by his word. By his word. If he is here, or if the word is here, you will not go home empty. You will not. Sometimes you might not even know that something has happened to you. You only realize after some time something has happened to you. That you are not the same person. That you are not. You are not the same person. Ujui kama umepata chochote lakini unajua kuna tofauti. Kuna 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 kitu imefanyika tu. Huh? One thing about the word also is you you crave for more. The word produces result in your life. And the more you see change in you, the more you desire to come and hear. Many preachers have quenched the desire, the appetite of the word of God, the desire of their members by presenting what is not the word. If I desire to hear the word of God more and more, to hear, to hear, to hear, and you come and sit under me, if that desire does not develop in you, then I am sick. Or you are sick. Might be you are sick, because I am hearing always. But the truth of the matter is these people who have the word, they have more appetite to get more in them. And them that also sit there and that they are in their presence want to have more. And 
the more of the word you have, the more of all the things that God has for you, you have. All things that God gives you, he gives you through his word. If as I'm speaking to you, something lands on you, faith is created in you concerning a specific area of your life. Hmm? Like I was talking about Emma in Logloho Girls. She listened, she listened, and then when she realized sickness is not a factor in her life, and we, she didn't look for prayer. She just went and told the matron, from today I'm eating. Gideri. She didn't need prayer. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you. In other words, what is causing you to have what belongs to you is the wrong information you have installed in yourself. Until the word comes and displaces it, you will still struggle. What do you want? In this life. Ask. What does the word say about it? Praise the Lord. Hmm? The Jews thought that. The scriptures. Was the word of God. But to their surprise. Jesus told them that. The scriptures are not the word. But rather. The scriptures only talk about the word. And Jesus is the word. Until you meet the word, you cannot understand the scriptures. Huh? Until you meet the word, you will not understand the scriptures. The word of God produces effect immediately after you hear them. And I'm saying, sometimes you might not even know that it is working on you. You only realize that it has worked on you. As it lands on you, you will understand. As it comes upon you, it has to change something about you. Something about you changes. The word. The word. The word carries the presence of God. I know the Holy Spirit is the one that makes the word to be read to us. Hmm? Where the Holy Spirit is not, we are going to speak about that. We are going to speak about that. About the Holy Spirit and how he makes the word so read to us. And the word of God, together with the Holy Spirit, they make the presence of God available. And when the presence of God is available, nothing that is not of God can survive there. Even sickness and disease. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is this. It is not enough. To have the Bible. There are people who have lived with this Bible all their life, even for 78 years, and their life has never changed. In fact, they have become a reproach to the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are looking at them and they're like, That's How and you? This isn't your Christo. Ukristo halisi inadhihirishwa wakati umepata neno si maandiko eh? the real christianity is made manifest when you have the word not just the scriptures in antioch they just look that you see one of the things that the word of God also does, it changes the way you think, the way the way you live. People just look at you and they you see there's something totally different about this person. They saw that in, in, in Antioch. They're looking at these people who call themselves Christians. 
or this, them, in fact, they were called then the people of the way. Until they gave them, the word Christian came from there, which means little Christ. They see Christ in them. And Christ. When there is the word, there is Christ in somebody. People just see. You don't have to struggle to show people that you are a believer. Praise the Lord. We'll continue from there. Father, we bless your holy name. Maraba shetere klere go sakri gladia. Matu krapo de mon sele prokle bro sherebe glad. Rabada ma sheketere klere bo sere plodia. We are not satisfied with the scriptures only. What we are reading in the Bible. We want our eyes to be opened. And we encounter you the way you are. We encounter the word. Bible says you sent the word and healed them. There's so many are speaking and preaching and there's no healing. People are living with their sickness and disease for 10 years. For 20 years in the church. But your word says you sent the word. Not the scriptures. They just read the scriptures. Thank you, Lord. We do not, we want to see the word changed. We want to see change that the word can cause in our individual lives. We do not want to just be comfortable. Just calling ourselves believers, running to church every now and then. When our life is not changing. The Bible says as we look in a mirror. We are metamorphosed. From one level of glory to another. The word calls transformation. The transformation. That is always an improvement. Of what has been there before. Improvement. Of what has been there before. So as we access the word, the quality of life that we live, the quality of the word that we know, increases. And that is what you always want to have. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Thank you. As we continue in this, our life is turning around for the glory of your name. We are going to discover our identity. Who we are and why we are. In Jesus precious name I pray. Amen. May the grace follow Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the spirit is with us now and forevermore. Amen. We have Kesha tonight. So I want to remind you of that. Yeah? You have a question? I am. Because of? <laughs>